Born in New York City in 1858, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt was governor of New York before becoming U.S. vice president. At age 42, Teddy Roosevelt then became the youngest man to assume the U.S. presidency after President William McKinley was assassinated in 1901. He won a second term in 1904 and became best known perhaps for his legacy of land conservation and his foreign policy to, quote, speak softly and carry a big stick. But before he became one of the great U.S. presidents, and had his face memorialized on Mount Rushmore, Teddy Roosevelt led a life that embodied his philosophy for, quote, the strenuous life. His early adventurous life is now the subject of a new work of historical fact and fiction titled The Perilous Adventures of the Cowboy King, a novel of Teddy Roosevelt and his times. And I'm delighted to have joining us now the author, the acclaimed author, I should say, and a good friend, Jerome Charon. Always good to Thank see you, you and especially good to see you when you have a new book out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, th this was such a, a wonderful book to read and an adventure yarn, like the old time right. adventure yarns. I, I, one, of the, one of the reviewers I saw said, he, meaning you, has written a rousing yarn and he has written it well. And I thought that's a great way to capture this whole thing because it's, it's not a traditional biography. No. You know, you, you, I am a fan of Teddy Roosevelt. I've read many of the biographies. This is very different kind of an action tale and story. Why did you want to do it that way? Well, <laughs> uh, he's the first superhero. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, uh, I was first drawn to him because, uh, not because of his heroic uh, manner, but because he was an as asthmatic child and his father took him on these rides uh, through the city so that he could breathe. And it's the great start of the book when it's, you when you yes, when you experience yes. that. You really experience that ride. You you are you are yeah. on that ride. See that that's one of the answers why one does not do a traditional biography because you can't do you can't have any intimacy in a biography. You need the beat of fiction to get into the rhythm of, of the character. But what impressed me the most was TR's father. Mm. A wealthy man who was not interested in wealth. Mm. He was only interested Boy, in poverty. Well, that's a foreign concept, isn't I it? I know. <laughs> very, very unlike our own yeah. time. And what possessed me, because I had such a troubled relationship with my own father, that I was very moved by the fact that Teddy's whole life was formed by the fact that he never wanted to do anything that his father would have disapproved of. Yeah. His entire life was built on that premise. As a matter of fact, when he came into the White House, the first thing you see is a portrait of his father. His father. I think one of the other things I'm struck by is the contrasts. Right? Right. So you talk about this sickly young boy right. becoming the superhero. Our, our first superhero is the way yes. you describe him, and, and he is. And all these adventures. So you start with the sickliness, and you, you be, he becomes the adventurer. Um, contrasts such as, you know, I, you talk about he heads out into the Dakotas. Right. Becomes he, a deputy he, sheriff. Becomes a deputy sheriff, but he's also carrying a Bowie knife that came right. from Tiffany's. Tiffany's. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, so well, who is this guy? All these contradictions. All yeah. these contradictions. The rich man who was the tenderfoot, who finally found a place for himself as a man of the West. He was the Manhattan cowboy. You know, the, he was filled with contradictions. And he was the first man who was really caricatured. So that's why the cover sort of represents the man. You I, know? I, want to, I want to talk about that, because you look at this cover, and I know they wanted to make it almost look like dime store uh, right. hero novels, comic book types of things. Uh, and, and the fact is, you mentioned, he was the, the most caricatured yes, he was. man, perhaps ever. And now maybe Except we might say we might say now, and I want to get to some comparisons of, okay. of the current president. But so so did did you kind of even as a fifteen cent as if it was you're buying it as right. a dime store thing? We okay with this from the start, or did, did you have to kind of get used to this? Well, I I didn't see the the book as a kind of a caricature. You know, I'm only the writer. You know? <laughs> So, but I do understand that, you know, my mind works in, in very, if you want something traditional, you don't read my you're, work. You're not the guy. <laughs> if you want something that's going to surprise you on the next page, I'm the right, right. person, yeah. you know. And you've done so many of these, the, these historical biographies in a fictionalized version. Exactly. So you, you can create the voice and the persona. You which need you to did. find the voice. Yeah. yeah. And, and as it, you know yourself as, yeah. a, as a novelist, yeah. that... that Voice is the thing that sort of is the magic 
that draws you into the book. And you, you definitely, as I said, I've been a, a Roosevelt fan. I've read so much of the right. stuff. And I immediately found the voice that you found here. Right. I, said, I said, Jerome got it. It's right here. Let me ask you this. The, there have been comparisons made about Teddy Roosevelt right. and President Trump. Right. And I know you've looked at some of the parallels between right. the two of them. What did you discover about the parallels? Well, it's it's strange that that the, there there are great similarities. I mean, in terms of ego, uh, in terms of uh, the way Trump uses the tweet, uh, the way Trump, uh, you know, they're both. I mean, their, their politics were completely different, but the egos were central to to. To both of them, and 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 both of them enjoyed the presidency immensely. They both having a great great time. Teddy Roosevelt didn't want to leave the White House. I mean, I think his depression starts the moment he leaves the White House. He had an uproaring, incredible time as president of the United States. He he's been described. And I know you've talked about this also as perhaps our greatest non-war time. Yes. President. President. Yeah, why do you think that is? Well, because, you know, he was not um, sort of, you know, beholden to any party. I mean, the Republicans really didn't put him into the White House. And also, he believed in helping people who were poor. He fought the corporations. He, you know, he created a kind of peace between uh, Japan and, and Russia. No one else could do it. So, you know, we caricature him, we make fun of him. If you remember, my first image of Teddy Roosevelt when I was a little boy, I saw arsenic and old lace, mm -hmm. and you see this crazy man running up the stairs as, as, as if he's recapitulating the charge up San Juan Hill. So that's the Teddy Roosevelt you imagine. But then when you start reading, you know, you see a very different man, a much more complex man. A man who, who was of his time, who had the prejudices of his time. I mean, look, he was a great hunter and a conservationist at the same time. Yeah. He started the Boone and Crockett Club, which is a club for hunters. They also built the Bronx Zoo. They also built all the national parks and made sure that there were no vendors in the park. You couldn't sell anything in there. So. You know, all of these contradictions, you know, if you go to Sagamore Hill, you see these antlers, and it's very hard for you to sort of position yourself in terms of who this man, he was a living contradiction. Just a fascinating man. Yeah. It's a marvelous book. It was described as a nonstop action adventure novel, and it is all that and more. And Thanks. I said, somebody who was a fan, I got into this, and now I'm, I'm really a fan. I think people, even if they're not fans of Teddy Roosevelt, they're going to want to read this because it's, I hope it's, so. it's fabulous. Jerome, it's always good to see you. And as I said, it's always good to see you when you come carrying a new book. Thank we'll you so much. We'll look forward to the yeah. next one. You'll be well. Bye.